This video is what I wish I knew before nursing school. Ooh. So, if you're watching this video, you're probably going to nursing school or thinking about going to nursing school and you really don't know what to expect. Well, here are the things that I've learned the past few years going to nursing school in hopes that it will help you to know what to expect. So I think the first thing is I really didn't know what to expect in terms of studying. Um, I had been an A student prior, so I kind of had my study habits down, but I didn't know how well they would transition over to nursing. And I feel like the first, you know, semester of nursing school was really me trying to figure out how to study. And I spent way too much time studying, honestly, and I still do. <laughs> so I, I don't know that my way has been super perfected, but I do know the difference between regular classes and nursing classes in terms of studying. So what I wish I knew before nursing school was that you really want to study the nursing intervention specifically. Yes, it's important to know the pathophysiology of diseases so that you know you can put connections together, especially in the field or with medications to know how this disease process works, how these meds affect it, what other organs or um, things could be expected in the body from the disease. All of those are super important. But realistically, are you going to have to go onto a nursing exam and write down, you know, the running angiotensin cycle? No, you won't. And although those are good things to know, and I definitely would want to know those as a nursing student, going into an exam, memorizing things like that, is not what is going to you know, get you the A on a nursing exam specifically. Those are definitely important for pharmacology exams because they may ask you something uh, related to that, that knowing the pathophysiology of it would help you. But when it comes to specific like med surge or pediatrics and maternity, they're not going to be asking you about different pathophysiology of disease. They're going to put you in a situation and ask, what would you do? So. What's important to know in that situation is what are the nursing interventions? And a lot of the times, things that you would do, three of the answers are what you would do, but they wanna know what you do first. So it's important to remember the interventions and remember the specific order. It's also important to remember things like times. So if you're learning something like when you give blood cells, you have to check uh, you know, vital signs every 15 minutes for the first hour or you know whatever it says in the book the times that's really important to remember because they will ask you that on an exam uh, another really important thing is, is like adverse effects and let's be honest most things are like nausea vomiting diarrhea constipation like those adverse effects are very common through a ton of disease processes so when you're learning new things in nursing school, what you want to focus on are the adverse effects that aren't common. So, you know, uh, you know, something may say like, oh, with this disease process, the big thing to look for is if the patient has a headache. That's the first sign of something that's coming that's bigger. Even though it's like, well, they'll have a headache, they'll be nauseous, they'll be vomiting. You want to know what the important one is. And then if you have certain, if you have certain things, this is another really important one, like hyponatremia, hypernatremia, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, and you have all of these things and you need to know the signs and symptoms for each one and they're all similar. So you write them out and then look at them and see which ones are specific. So, you know, there, there's going to be more than one that makes you nauseous, right? So that's, you're not going to get a test question that's like, the patient's nauseous, what do they have? It could be like 30 different things but there's going to be something specific. So for example, you know, hypernatremia, it, there's a lot of cerebral um, effects. So they're going to be confused. Their level of consciousness is going to shift. You're going to see changes in their behavior. That's the big one for that. So when you get a question that's like, your patient was talking to you and you notice that they were confused, which was different from their baseline. And so, you know, here are the labs and what would you expect? So 
it's just, I am not a test question writer. So, but I'm just saying you want to look at the specific ones. Uh, another thing that is really great is having uh, like supplemental material, which I really didn't find until my second semester. So the Saunders books, uh, the Davies success series, they have like a maternity one, a pediatrics and med surge. Those are great for practice questions and especially, you know, over break, it's good to go through those questions because you actually have to learn how to answer nursing style questions. That's really important. Uh, so another thing, okay, so this is so funny. Um, so there is a concept in nursing that I literally, it's the simplest thing, but I got this question in different forms wrong probably four times till it finally hit me like, why don't you understand? So if a patient is having trouble breathing, so this is the thing, you want to understand basic concepts because you will be getting them throughout your entire program in different formats. So what do I mean by that is if your patient is having trouble breathing, what is the first thing you do? I've gotten this question so many times in so many different forms. You know, your patient is desats and blah, blah, blah. So they put it in all different forms. But if your patient is having trouble breathing, the first thing you do is sit them up, which I knew. I knew you sit them up. But you're going to get questions that are like in high fowlers, in low fowlers, in semi fowlers. Where do you sit, or do you put an O2 mask on them? So the first thing you do when a patient is having trouble breathing is you sit them up, and you sit them up into high fowlers. And the reason that I got this question wrong literally four times is because I had read somewhere in the book that you have to be careful when you sit the patient up in high fowlers that it doesn't compress the diaphragm. And for some reason, that one line stuck with me forever. So every time I got this question, I would always pick, put them in Fowlers, and it's no. It's always high Fowlers. If you have a COPD patient, they actually call it a tripod position where you'll sit them on, if they're sitting on the end of the bed and you'll have them kind of put their hands out and lean forward, and it's just natural as a person, like if you're having trouble breathing, you kind of bend forward to get that full breath, and it's the same thing with your patients. You want them in high fowler. So sometimes in nursing school, you'll see one sentence in the book, and it will throw off your basic concept. Because every time I got this question, I was like, oh, you put them in semi fowler so their diaphragm can fully expand. And it's like, no, that is not the answer. And I kept getting it wrong till it finally clicked to me that I was like, once we started learning about COPD, that's when I was like, that's why it's always high Fowler. So don't get caught up on like one sentence in the book. You want to know the big picture. Another thing I would say is my, so my first semester, I did really well. I got an A. So I didn't go too often to meet with my advisor because it just was like, I was getting good grades and I just was like trying to get into the swing of everything. So second semester, we have maternity and pediatrics together, and just the developmental stages of pediatrics just threw me for a loop when they were in nursing style questions because it's like, you know, at what age would you introduce milk in a cup? And it's like one, 18 months, two. Like, you know what, I'm just like, oh my God, and you have all this other material you're remembering. So, my last two semesters, I've been one point off from an A, so I haven't gotten an A. It's so sad. It's like, it is so close, but yet so far. But I have started going after the exams to review my exams with my advisor. And this has been amazing. So last semester, or two semesters ago, I would go only when I didn't do super well on the test. So if I scored below a 90, I would go and I would review it. However, this semester, what I started doing is every test, even if I got you know a 94 or a 96, I would go and review what I got wrong, why I got it wrong. Well, come to the final, I didn't get an A on the final, but I was a point from getting an A on the final. So, you know, it's, it pays off. There were so many questions on the final that I was like, this is from my test review. Like we went over this, like I remember talking about this and that was so, so helpful because 
they're testing you on the concepts that they expect you to know. So you're going to see those again when it comes to the final. So you want to be able to understand. And it's not like you can leave the test with the test questions to go home and review on your own. So it's just easier. You meet with your advisor 30 minutes, an hour, and you really go through and understand why you got things wrong. And that's super helpful. So I highly recommend that. Another thing is working. And I have friends in nursing school who are the same way. They've either dwindled down to very minimal hours because they have to work because they have like children or you know big loans or whatever um but it's a minimal i mean there's a couple people in my class that are just workaholics that work you know 24 hours a week but i mean that's really the max we're not seeing people work more than two days a week uh and even that you know they're like i'm so burnt out and exhausted so i would say financially get yourself at a place where you have the opportunity to not work or to work minimal like one day a week because nursing school is extremely stressful in those days of studying and doing projects and things like that are really helpful to be able to do that Let's see, another thing I wish I knew before coming to nursing school, you know, I wish I had made a list of the best, like my personal favorite coping mechanisms. Uh, because, you know, it's just so stressful that I think I, you get so in your head that sometimes you forget to do the things that you enjoy that bring you light and happiness. And, you know, for me, I love making YouTube videos and I've kind of been slacking on you guys because I've just been so busy and in my mind I'm like, I need to study, I need to study, but realistically I need to take that one to two hours a week to do yoga, to go, you know, a couple, maybe an hour a day to go to the gym, make more videos, be creative, you know, so really identify the things that make you happy and be able to put that in you know, a couple hours a week to keep your sanity and let off some of that steam. So that's really important too. Uh, and I would say probably the last thing, which I kind of knew before coming to nursing school, but I've seen with a lot of my peers, is to really take it seriously. Nursing school is not something that you can half-heartedly work your way through. This is not you know, night before you write the paper, you just jam, crunch, study for a test and you go in and get an A. This is not like normal college courses. Uh, and so you need to go in and be giving 110% at all times because if not, you risk failing out. We have lost, when we started until now, our last semester, probably, two-thirds of our class. Uh, they actually give us 20 LPNs in the last year. The LPN to RNs join with us because, I mean, we'd be down to half of what we started with. It's crazy. So, you know, you need to put 100% into this. And I'm only saying that, and I know a lot of you guys might be watching this and be like, well, I have kids and I have to work and this and that. I'm only telling you that because I know multiple people who have failed out of nursing school and it puts you in not the best place when you've put in all this time and money for your prereqs and to apply and taking the T's to go and fail out. I want you guys to be able to know that you need to put in 110% so that because the thing is nursing school, these classes don't transfer. If you do a year and a half at you know a program and you fail out this other school is not going to accept those classes you start over all that money all that time wasted so you know I really want you guys to understand that this needs to be hundred and ten percent mentally physically emotionally you need to have your coping skills ready you need to have your family on board you know I've missed multiple uh, holidays with my family because I needed to study. So, you know, just have that kind of in your mind. And actually, I have one more. So one more thing is, and I have another video about this, uh, you know, when I first started, I was very uncomfortable in the clinical setting. Uh, 
I'm a very emotional, empathetic person, so sometimes I have a hard time communicating with people, even though people think I'm extroverted. I'm not. I'm definitely an introvert. I have a hard time communicating and knowing the right thing to say when somebody is in a crisis because I just feel so much for them. And so in clinical, you know, I thought my whole first semester, I thought that that was my downfall, that I felt too much. I couldn't go in and perform at the ultimate, ultimate professional level because I was just too emotionally invested. But I've learned since last semester, and I'm almost at the end, this is my last semester, so I learned last semester that that was actually my strength. Uh, I had a lot of patients tell me that I was very caring and made their time, you know, wonderful, and I had patients come back to the hospital to thank me prior weeks after they left, and, you know, I've just realized and I also had a discussion with the director of a psychiatric unit in the area that was telling me the thing that nursing students really lack and nurses in general is empathy for people. And, you know, that really hit home to see somebody who is the director of a unit telling me that, that I'm sitting there and I'm like, all this time I thought that this was my downfall and really this is my strength. So. I just thought that that was really cool. So I wish I had known that when I started, so I didn't beat myself up over it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you a little bit of insight on what to expect and my tips for going into nursing school. And I look forward to hearing all about your adventures in nursing school. And feel free to comment below. I read them all and I'll try to reply. But I love interacting with you guys. So make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.